Rachel, what do you got in your eyes? We haven't cleaned out your eyes yet. Oh, there you go. There you go. Good morning, my friend. Morning. How'd you sleep there, buddy? How'd you sleep? I slept great. We've been here for eight hours exactly right now. Actually, eight hours and 15 minutes because I just finished my pre-trip. We're on our way to Winnipeg. we got to deliver this load of wood this afternoon yet. It's 8.15 Central Time, and we have to be there before the end of the day. So we better boogie. When's the last time you heard someone say boogie? That's right, I said it. Let's boogie. Can't boogie too much in the truck stop parking lot. Some people think they can. I prefer not to kill people, so we're just gonna meander our way out of the parking lot, and as soon as we get on the highway, we're gonna boogie. Have you seen some of these drivers in the truck stops flying through here? Like, you know, they're NASCAR racers. Just flying, whoa. What are you gonna do when you run someone over? Where's that guy going? Why are you turning right? Can you go that way? No, you go that way. The, the highway's the other way, my friend. Oh well, we're going this way. We're gonna stop at these two stop signs just in case you missed one of them. They got two of them. We put our signal device on like I should have about two seconds ago. And we're gonna get on the live. So we're in Balgoni Baloney. Balgoni, Saskatchewan. 550 kilometers to go to our destination turn in right on 46. Winnipeg. Then turn left. So that's uh, ungoverned at 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, unfortunately. Not by choice. But it should take us about five and a half hours of just steady driving to get there. Well, I got bugs all over my window again. I didn't have time to clean those off this morning. I am in a hurry. And I have a green light. No time for stopping. Sorry guys, you're gonna have to deal with bugs on the window again today. Turn left on one. No, we gotta go around these dumb roundabouts first, Mandy. Calm down. All the way up the hill here, there's two roundabouts here. I know uh, Saskatchewan is trying to be like uh, Wisconsin. Have you ever like traveled through Wisconsin? If you're not from the state, it may blow your mind. They have so many roundabouts there. They got more roundabouts than you can shake a stick at. Everything's a roundabout. They like circles there. They're very big into circles. All of these, that's a roundabout if you didn't know. I'm getting used to them, I don't mind them. Not exactly my favorite thing in the world, but I can sort of see the benefit to them over having just a stop sign or stoplight, but when the intersection is really, really busy, they don't work as well because then you have like people constantly in the circle here and you can't get in because it's just too busy, especially with a big truck. Like this guy here. And then you never know where people are going. Is this guy going this way? Is he going that way? Where? Okay, so he's going left, okay. But they're fine. I'm getting used to them. Getting, it's a... Uh, it's getting better. All right, here we are. This is the on-ramp onto the Trans-Canada eastbound. Pedal to the metal. We got freight to deliver. Man, that's bad. Those bugs in the windshield are really bad. I apologize. That's really bad. I don't know why I'm wearing a sweater. It's hot. I guess it was a little chillier this morning at the truck stop. This is a very smooth section of the highway here. I'm very impressed, Saskatchewan. Wow. So I uh, just 
talk to the customer and uh, let them know, hey, here I come. And they're like, all right, we're ready for you. And I'm like, okay, I'm coming. They said, yeah, you said that. Like, okay, we'll see you in a bit. It wasn't exactly, I'm paraphrasing. We didn't say exactly that, but. I should be there, I think I'll be there before 2.30. Between 2 and 2.30. I got 450 kilometers to go right now. At the speed I'm going, that's four and a half hours of driving. So, in miles, 60 times four would be 240. Add another 30 for the half hour. Did you do the math? But 270 miles, right? Four and a half hours. <laughs> Did I get that right? <laughs> Trekker Josh is traveling at 60 miles an hour. It will take Trekker Josh four and a half hours to reach his destination. How many miles does Trekker Josh have left to go? Come on, you high school math students. Where are you? How about kilometers for you Canadians and the rest of the world actually watching me who, you know, deals in a reasonable system called the metric system. Trucker Josh is traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. Trucker Josh has 450 kilometers to his destination. How long will it take Trucker Josh to reach his destination? Come on. Any math teachers out there watching me? I remember my math teacher. His name was Mr. Griggs. Unfortunately, he tragically passed away. I believe it was last year or the year before. It may have been the year before. Time flies so badly. I, I wasn't able to make it to his funeral. I didn't know him personally that well, and it's been, what, 12 years since I was in his classroom. But he was a great math teacher. He made everybody feel smart, you know, even though I wasn't that smart. <laughs> but he helped me. Uh, and he taught me everything I need to know for my trucking career. All that math I was just talking to you about, that was all the stuff I learned in his class. I forget what his cause of death was. I don't want to say, was it cancer or was it... I don't want to say for sure because I don't remember. But uh, he was too young to die, we'll just say that. He was too young to go. He was probably in his, oh, I don't want to guess his age either, but I'm going to guess 50s, mid-50s, I think. Too young, we'll say. He's a good man. That guy's got a few things on his boat. Yikes. Took me forever to get past him. He kept speeding up and slowing down. Now this SUV up here doesn't know how fast she wants to go. They can't figure it out. No, nope, no, she's speeding up again. Okay, speeding up. Nice, this guy beside me with the boat and all the bikes is gonna let me in here. Hopefully this lady in the SUV finds her cruise control. Located conveniently within finger's reach. I'm almost in Winnipeg right now where I'm gonna attempt to clean this windshield again. Uh, I'm gonna fill up at Flying J in Headingley on the west side of Winnipeg and I'm gonna go a little further south of that along the west perimeter uh, around towards Oak Bluff area there, McGilbrey Boulevard if you're familiar with Winnipeg. And I'm gonna deliver this wood. And I got my load changed on me. My next load. My next load was going to Red Deer, Alberta. I believe I told you that this morning, right? They changed that around on me, uh, which is fine. It's actually better this way for me. Uh, more money in the end, I think. Instead, I'm going to be going down to Minnesota for Monday morning, which means I can stay home until Sunday. Sunday uh, early afternoon or late morning. Probably around lunch, I'll leave. Head down to uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Drop that load off. It's waiting for me in the yard already. We'll take a look at it today when we get to the yard in a couple of hours. And then I have a reload out of Minnesota that's taking me on multiple drops, one in Regina, Saskatchewan, and the rest in Alberta. I believe there's four all together, three or four all together. It's a load of glass, I think. I haven't hauled one of those in about a month or two, so that'll be nice. I'll need to tarp those. 
that'll keep me busy for all of next week. So I'll be in Minneapolis for Monday, reload late Monday, probably get going Tuesday, start delivering Wednesday, Thursday, reload on Friday, come home, be home Saturday-ish. That should work. I really want to be home Saturday because uh, my dad, my father-in-law, and my cousin Will are all coming down for a wood cutting party. <laughs> we're gonna get rid of some of that, those dead trees in the yard and all the dead trees in the bush. We're gonna pull as much as we can out and haul it all away. I told them, as much wood as you cut up, just get it out of here. And Will is also nice enough to offer to reshingle our gazebo on our deck because he's a roofer. So we'll talk about that more next weekend. I got my tarps off the load now, I'm at the customer, and I'm just waiting for them to unload me. There's one truck here in front of me yet. Looks like he's just cleaning up his trailer. He's got one of those nice curtain side trailers like my buddy Moses pulls. So much easier than tarping it, but oh well. I guess my man card is just a little bit bigger. I tarp it myself. So once they unload me here, it's back to the yard. I'll take a look at the load we're taking out on Sunday, see if I want to tie it down today or if I can tie it down on Sunday before I leave. And then be off to the races. Back home for the week. Weekend, not the whole week. That'd be terrible. Well, actually, it would be good to be home for the whole week. It'd be terrible for the bank, is what I'm trying to say. Gotta watch my words here. So I was wrong about them storing this wood outside. Remember before when I picked it up, I said I don't understand why we gotta tarp some of these lumber loads because, you know, a lot of this lumber just sits outside as soon as it gets here, but all of this was tarped on the way here. However, mine is different than this kind of lumber. These are like two by fours and building materials. I got this plywood that he's taken off of me here, eh? You see it there? And they're actually putting it inside this building. You can see him over here. So I actually feel like the tarp job was justified and that I tarped it for a good reason this time. <laughs> Plus, like I said, you want the load tarped, it involves a little bit extra pennies. Man, after unloading about 50,000 pounds of lumber, I feel light as a kite. I feel like a, like a race car driver almost, like I have acceleration now. Man, diesel, watch this, watch this. Oh, the feeling. Yes! Oh, so light, so nice. Okay, there's the speed limit. It may not look like a lot to you who drive cars and what we call four-wheelers, but for me that felt like <laughs> lightning fast acceleration. So what do you think, Diesel? Should we stop across the street, get some Tim Hortons, then head home? What do you think, buddy? Oh. Good to be home, good to be home. That grass needs mowing again. It just keeps growing. Every time I cut it, it just grows right back. So I guess we know what I'm gonna be doing this weekend at some point, I'm gonna mow on the lawn again. There's always stuff to do, always stuff to do. For now, I'm dirty. Let's go hop in the shower. Well, I'm gonna go hop in the shower, you guys stay here. Weirdos. <laughs>